Question number 10, the Honourable Nikki Kay. Here we go. Mr Speaker, question to the Minister of Education. What advice, if any, has he received on the potential estimated cost of implementing recommendations in the report by the Tomorrow's Schools Independent Task Force? Uh, Mr Speaker, the Government only received the final task force, force report in the last few weeks. We asked the task force to release it and seek public submissions. Once that process is complete, detailed costings will be prepared to inform the decision-making process. Mr Speaker, supplementary question. Is he really confirming that the task force did no work on costings and that no government agencies have given any fir formal view on what the proposals will cost? Uh, Mr Speaker, that wasn't what the question asked. The question asked what advice I had received rather than what officials had done working with the task force. Um, I'm not sure what, the, what uh, costing information the officials provided to the task force. That's a matter of conversation between them. Mr Speaker, supplementary question. What is the legal status of the 2,400 boards of trustees representing around 19,000 parents under the task force proposals? Uh, well, Mr Speaker, under the task force proposals, they'd continue to be Crown entities, uh, but that's a matter for discussion. The proposals the task force have put forward are bold, um, and I certainly look forward to the, com the conversation about whether or not there is acceptance that that's the right way to go. Mr Speaker, supplementary question. Does he agree with Avondale College Principal Brent Lewis, who referred to the proposals as real style and stuff? No. Mr Speaker, no, I don't agree with that. I do agree with Lorraine Kerr from the School Trustees Association, however, who said that an ideal, ideal outcome will be enough change to enable school boards of trustees to perform their strategic governance roles on behalf of the local community without constantly getting tied up in the compliance aspects of running the business activities of the school. Mr Speaker, supplementary question. Is he concerned that under the proposals the power of parents will be significantly reduced and they will be disempowered under this model? Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm looking forward to hearing what parents have to say about that. One of the things that the task force found uh, was that parents who serve on boards of trustees have often found that the job is much bigger than they thought they were taking on when they do it. They put their hands up to be involved in school governance, thinking that they're there to improve the quality of the education their kids get, and then they find themselves tied up in complex legal discussions about the leaky buildings that they might have inherited from a previous administration, or a whole host of other administrative issues that they're not actually that keen to be involved with, and they would much prefer someone else to be involved with so that they can focus on the job that they actually thought they were putting their hands up for. The public um, submissions process is an opportunity to have all of those conversations. I do acknowledge the concerns the member has raised about uh, the importance of ensuring that parents don't feel disempowered through this process. I agree with that. I think it's incredibly important that we continue to empower parents and their involvement in their kids' education. That's one of the things that this government will be looking at very closely as we consider the public submissions process. Uh, question number 11, Tamati Coffey. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to...